Hi there everyone. So I'm going to do a video on how to use SoapCalc.net. Now a lot of people have asked me how the heck do I use SoapCalc first glance. It's really daunting. So hopefully I'm going to go through this step by step and explain all these parts to you. Um, it might take me a while to get through this and I might have to do part one, part two series or something like that. So check in the video descriptions for that information. So in the meantime, I'm going to dive right into this and do the best I can. I'm still kind of a relatively a new soaper. Um, I've been soaping now for about a year, but I understand this fairly well, at least well enough to explain it all to you guys. So the N-A-O-H, that is going to be your lie. So basically any soap that you have as true soap is going to be made with some kind of a lye. Uh, there is no soap without lye and there is no soap with lye in it. Basically that means to get true soap you are going to need lye to do it, to transfer those oils, to change it, to chemically make it into a soap. Um, that process is called saponification. Now when you have enough um, curing time, what happens to your lye is it changes so much that there's no longer any lye in the soap. It's just all soap. So um, yeah, it takes, it takes lye to, to change those oils into soap. And if you don't use lye, then you're actually creating a detergent, not a soap. So um, keep that in mind. Now, um, the NaOH, that is sodium hydroxide. The KOH is potassium hydroxide. Some people live in a climate where it's really humid, so that's that 90%. It's not 100% lye. It's mixed with some other chemicals to keep that lye stable. Um, so do the best that you can with what you've got. Now, you can find sodium hydroxide in uh, your cleaners, toilet cleaners, uh, sink cleaners, things like that in a hardware section of your store. So um, I get mine at, at a craft store, at, actually at um, Ace, Ace Hardware, Stanley's, it's pretty cool. Um, I love that store. Kudos, Stan's Mary Mart. So um, <laughs> there's that for you. So the NOH and NAOH, excuse me, is your sodium hydroxide. That is for making your solid bar soap. This is for making liquid soap. Now, I am not making any liquid soap, so I'm sticking with this. Now, this is going to be your default every time, so make sure the proper one is selected. Part two, we have pounds, ounces, and grams. Those numbers are the default setting. So, if you have clicked and said, hey, you know, um, or here, I'm going to click here. Say, I, if I was a master soap maker or whatever, I said, hey, I wanted eight pounds, which is a huge amount of soap. Or I accidentally wanted the eight ounces and I didn't um, correct it and go, oh yeah, whoops, I want, you know, right here. It's going to change. So every time you click your pounds, it's always going to default to one. Your ounces, it's always going to default to 16. Your grams is always going to default back to 500. So make sure you click the proper one first before you type in your number. Otherwise, you're going to end out with the wrong um, dimensions and end out with a very large batch of soap when you really wanted eight ounces. <laughs> you know, so um, keep that in mind. Now, when I first started, I used eight ounces. I did not know at the time that grams was by far a much more accurate measurement because um, it's a much smaller number. So you can get much more exact on your oil weights, your lye weights, your water weights, all that good stuff. So um, select grams. Now I picked up, yes, you can get a weight conversion on Google and you can type in, hey, it went eight ounces and it'll give you your equivalent in grams. So if you keep your batches incredibly small 
and you screw something up, you're not going to be out a lot of money. So it is by far better to make a lot of small batches and get a lot more experience than it is to make large batches uh, and get very little, if not almost no experience at all. So keep everything very small. I will still go back to this as my original one whenever I test a new oil for my scents, essential oils, uh, fragrance oils, because sometimes they'll react with the lye and totally screw up my batch. So I will still go back to my very, very small original recipe to uh, keep those m happy little mistakes from happening <laughs> and becoming terrible big ones that you can't correct. <laughs> All right, so 38% water weight is about the average. It's going to be what most people's soap is going to need for their percentages. Now, I don't mess with the lye concentration or the water to lye ratio. I don't bother with that. I just, just cross that out. I will talk more about why you will need to change your water weight for certain soaps. So I will get back to this, so keep that in mind. Super fat. Super fat basically means how much lye you are using for, for the oils that is available. Now the water is going to eventually need to evaporate back out of the soap. That's going to be your curing process. The super fat allows you to choose how much lye percent you want for those oils that are available. So um, the higher or the lower the number here on the super fat, the higher the lye concentration is going to be. So if you have zero here, that means you have maxed out as much lye as you can possibly put in those um, oil weights that's available to you. Um, if you measure something wrong, this means your soap could burn you. So keeping it at a 5% at the most, I think, is relatively <laughs> a safe number to use. Um, you can, if you're making like a like a laundry detergent, do it at a zero and then use coconut oil, which is very, very hard oil. It has very high in cleansing factors. And uh, then you have a more harsh soap that will really work well to get your clothes clean. But um, as, a, as an average go-to, the 5% is, is fairly good to, to use. Um, the rest of this is going to be a little bit trickier to explain. So I'm going to use a different video to try and explain that in. So look in the video descriptions for further information on that. Alright, I'll see you guys later.